Walk into a grocery store anywhere in the US and look into the chilled food section and you'll see rows of egg cartons. If you're European, such as I am, yes, Britain is still geographically in Europe, you'll think, that's strange, why do Americans refrigerate their eggs? If you're an American in a European supermarket and you see eggs next to the bread or packets of pasta, you might think, that's strange, why don't Europeans refrigerate their eggs? In the US, in order to avoid infections carried in eggs, such as salmonella, they wash them thoroughly and chill them. They also do this in Japan. In Europe, on the other hand, in order to avoid infections carried in eggs, it's illegal to wash eggs that are for sale. That's because eggshells carry a natural protective layer called a cuticle and washing them will make them porous and expose them to contamination. It's funny how they reach opposite conclusions to solve the same problem. Both methods seem to work, although I do wonder why American producers go through this extra process, which seems unnecessary. In most of Europe, smoking is banned in bars and cafes and restaurants because it's harmful, not only for the smoker, but for everybody around the customers and the staff. You can, of course, smoke on the street. I mean, why not? It's a street. No problem there, right? But in Japan, you cannot smoke on the street because it's harmful, not only for the smoker, but for everybody around. I mean, everybody has to walk on the street. Children walk on the street, for God's sake. These innocent people shouldn't have to put up with dangerous smoke. You can, however, smoke in cafes, bars and restaurants. That's okay because you choose to go into a cafe, a bar or a restaurant or not go into a cafe, bar or a restaurant. It's your choice, so you take the risk, right? In France, if you want to vote in an election, you must bring your identity card. The reason is that they believe that voting is crucially important. It's a civic duty. And of course, you need to prove who you are in order to stop voter fraud, which would undermine democracy and threaten the system of government. In Britain, if you want to vote in an election, you do not need to bring proof of identity. And the reason is that they believe that voting is crucially important. It's a civic duty and they don't want to prevent any citizen from voting just because they had foolishly forgotten their ID. Voting is an inalienable right and stopping an eligible person from voting would undermine democracy and threaten the system of government. If they are suspicious, of course, they'll ask some supplementary questions, but you don't need proof of identity. In fact, we don't even have identity cards in the UK and some people don't even have passports. Consider this. You buy a ship and you fill it with cargo. Once you've paid for the ship and its cargo, you don't need to pay any more. Unless, of course, the ship sinks, in which case you need to buy a new ship and cargo. Until one day, some bright spark says, hey, what if the opposite were true? When the ship is okay, you pay me, but if the ship sinks, we pay you. And voila, the insurance industry was born. Let's turn to language, as that's my field. In France, they have the Académie Française to protect and oversee the French language with 40 members called Les Immortels and it is the official authority on the usages, vocabulary and grammar of French in France because the French language needs protecting. The English language has no such academy. The people decide what is correct and not correct Yes, there are style guides, but we shouldn't put something as crucial as our language in the hands of a small elite body of men and women into the hands of 40 people. 
That wouldn't be right. The English language needs protecting. Wherever we go, we find sound logical rules that work, or at least make sense, but the opposite is sound and logical and makes sense too. They can't both be right, can they? Now, I'm an English teacher, and I see this all the time, online, in the classroom, and on YouTube. And I myself have several excellent videos on how to learn English, which you should definitely check out. And of course, I'm sure I'm right, but, just, but maybe, maybe the opposite could also be true. Despite what people say, the language industry is incredibly successful. One billion people speak English as a second language, and that's just English. They can't all be using the same method, can they? Can they? Now, I read all the comments on these videos. Yes, I do. And often they say things that are completely contradictory, completely the opposite. For example, the only way to learn a language is to speak it. Grammar is a waste of time. Yeah. Okay. I added the yeah at the end. Anyway, others will say the key to learning is studying grammar, vocabulary and linguistic structures. Do this correctly and the rest will follow. Yeah. They can't both be right, can they? From personal experience, I know students who've learnt English pretty well just by speaking. They tend to make a few grammar mistakes, but they can communicate. And I've met students who've learnt English just by studying, reading and learning the rules of grammar and lots of vocabulary. They speak pretty well, even though they do sound a bit robotic. The point is that if anyone tells you that there is only one way to learn a language, and of course it's their way, tell them they are talking bollocks, to use a technical term. They may have a good method, but whatever they say, could it be that the opposite is also true? Let's face it, when it comes to learning languages, lots of methods work. The only truth is that it takes a lot of time and hard work to become fluent. So do be aware of fake gurus who promise fluency in three months with zero effort. They just want your money. By the way, we do have a video about that up here. They say that the only constant in life is change. Whatever you believed 10 years ago, you almost certainly think differently now. And whatever you believe today, you'll have a different opinion in 10 years time. Beware people who never change their opinions, who insist they are always right. We should ignore their stale ideas, their inflexibility and resist their dogma. There is an expression, there is more than one way to skin a cat. We are all different and we're learning languages just like everything else. What is appropriate for you what works for you may not be appropriate and may not work for me. And that's probably true for most things in life too and not just learning languages. The best method is the one that works for you. But keep an open mind because whatever you're doing, whatever you're trying, don't forget to consider that the opposite as that might just work too. I hope you enjoyed that video and do you have any tales of opposites? If you do, let us know in the comments below and what do you think is the best way to learn a language? Let us know your thoughts about that too. Have a beautiful day, stay mellow, see you next time, bye!